Hello, welcome pen friends. I'm going to do a journal flip through for you today in my ink journal and I've got six inks that I have not covered yet. I have put a few pictures on Instagram but as far as here on YouTube on the channel we haven't really talked about these yet. So let me just go over them real quick in um, on the tile form first and then we'll go through to the pages. The first one is Diamine Moon Dust. It's a shimmer uh, the shimmer tastic from uh, diamine and it's gorgeous i i don't know whether to call it gray or silver because you can go either way when you get it splatted it gets real silvery but it's definitely a nice gray ink as well and then the next ink is colorverse kepler's law it's red but it has enough sheen that it does some tricks to you and at times it looks almost orange it and coming out of the nib so that's going to be fun very interesting okay then the next one is Sailor Magno Natashiko. A uh, very pretty blue that was reminiscent of a couple of inks that came out of, one was out of Troublemaker and one was out of Vinta inks. So I think you'll enjoy the comparisons and discussions on that one. Okay, then next is Ackerman number 13, Simplicity's Violet, which I got the sample of. I ordered it because of trying to kind of find similar inks to Lamy Dark Lilac. And that was interesting. Okay, and then next is a, oh, a lovely ink. This is Van Diemen's Winter Morning Frost Shimmer. And I did spill a little water on it, so try to ignore that little dot there. That really <laughs> wasn't supposed to be there, but I didn't redo it because materials are, you know, <laughs> they're not scarce, but I don't go to the store very often these days. So this is a real beautiful ink. Um, kind of falls into a blue category even though you could also call it gray and you could you it's just very complex and i really love it okay and then the next one is a van diemen's as well if you'll notice total i've got four shimmer inks this time this is van diemen's diamonds are a girl's bff and i've got more extensive notes um this but this has got uh, silver shimmer Okay, and then uh, lucky number seven is a beautiful ink that just came through the door this week from um, Pen Friend Marilyn. Uh, sent a sample. Thank you, thank you. I don't know how I would have gotten a hold of it otherwise. Um, Hipponoto ki uh, Kiwi Inks V1. It's a limited edition, and it's got the magenta. Uh, base color then it's got blue shimmer which doesn't come out as much here you can see it a little and uh, oh gosh a green uh, sheen so but we're gonna see it better in the ink journal so let's go ahead and uh, kind of re put these back in order because we'll be going uh, we'll be going into some color comparisons on most of the colors not all of them so starting with a diamine moon dust this was the first ink that I felt well enough to study and work with after my last back flare-up um, that happened a little over two weeks ago. And what got this kicked off for me, I had the sample from Pen Friend NR. Let's look at that beautiful uh, shimmer and shininess there. It's so pretty. Um, and I was looking for a silver ink after seeing a nice uh, energy video by Prune Harris. So to make a long story short, I got out my sample of this and was very grateful to Pen Friend NR because I had a teensy bit left from my sample and then she had sent me one. So in the meantime, I did go ahead and buy a bottle of that after I splashed around with it and realized it's just exactly perfect. I love the base color as well. I love the fact that you can get all that awesome um, shimmer and sheen in artwork and in anything you want to fill in in your journal and so it just i don't know it's really been a lot of fun but i have covered gray inks a lot so we're gonna we're gonna skip the comparisons on that and i'll just kind of link um my gray playlist for you so you can kind of see i put this ink on a lot of different comparison panels in the past um here's the chromatography and the water test showed a little water resistance not a lot um, it, it even showed that on the tile, so that helps us kind of determine it might have just a little staying power, but not too much. Okay, so moving right along. Um, the next, so I didn't actually date this entry. It probably took me three days to do. One day I decided I was well enough to go to the sink and splatter, and, you know, back then I wasn't feeling very good. I'm much better now. I'm working on healing. Um, okay, so then in this first day that I really did a full... Uh, 
study at once was color versus Kepler's law. This beautiful red with the gold sheen. <clears throat> okay, I the way I got this was a 15 mil bottle from Venice. It was it said on the little box gift box or something. In other words, it was it's a free with purchase um, that they threw in to my purchase. And um, so thank you, thank you for that. It's just gorgeous. Oh, I forgot to mention the pen I was working with because that's one thing I did do a different pen almost every time. Um, for the moon dust, I was using my Jinhao X750 with a broad nib. That's one that I definitely love for reviewing. And uh, with Kepler's Law, I was using Lamy Vista with a broad nib. Those are the two pens I, I prefer nowadays for uh, reviewing. I'm comfortable and know how each of those pens works. So this, I really like this ink, um, especially on Tomoe River paper. It felt like it was looking really nice. It looks Christmassy, um, and I enjoyed it very much. So the flow was excellent, and I find that to be true with Colorverse inks. Water resistant, no, um, and you can see that. It, it might have just a little, but that's not enough to address an envelope. Uh, shading, yes, the shading is quite nice. And then it has an antique bronze she um, sheen. Can you see that? I think you can. I know it's kind of funny me moving it around. I don't want to make you dizzy, but I want you to be able to see it. Okay, um, let's do some color comparisons on that one. I'll move the book aside and we'll just, we'll just see what we can do. Here we are in the middle with our color. I felt like it was a lot like Monteverde Cherry Danish. And it has something in common with the Mon uh, Monaco Red by Diamine, too, but eh, it's getting away from it. Here's KWZ Red number one. That's brighter, more going toward that traditional uh, red. Here's one a lot of us are familiar with, Diamine Red Dragon. It's not the same at all. You get that, that difference, but I thought maybe we'd Mont Blanc Velvet Red. Hmm, yeah, there's a difference there too, but still, we're in the ballpark, I think. Okay, I thought it was a, quite a ways from Diamine Oxblood, but there's, so you can see it. Gosh, I don't think, once I put it down, we won't be able to read, but we know our color of the day. Let's see. We really need to be able to read the names of the inks, at least, even if the color is cut off. Okay, I knew this was going to be awkward, but... I do love the color comparisons. So then we've got Noodler's Tokyo Gift. It's just much brighter pinkier red. <clears throat> Same with um, uh, Birmingham Fred Rogers Cardigan Red. I'm not sure the fate of this ink, whether they're still making it and whether or not it's going to be the same red. So we'll, we'll put that on the side. And then here's J. Arbonne Rouge Granat. My, I'm probably not saying it right. I'm not at my best. Okay, um, it's more of a maroon almost than a red, but a red dragon, did we already do that? Yeah, we did that. I thought so. Okay, here's Robert Oster Muddy Dragon, which is interesting, but still not the same. And last but not least, Noodler's Red Black. I felt like there was some something in common, but we had a lot more water resistance and it's darker, way darker, but still kind of in that zone. So... Hopefully that'll help you if you're looking for a comparison. Maybe you want something a little bit uh, more economical. Okay, so next up, we are going to move right along to Sailor Manyo Narashiko. Okay, so this came in the ink flight. Um, and it is that beautiful kind of complex blue with all kinds of neat stuff going on. Look at that turquoise coming out. And it's even got some pink that I can see and it's just really pretty. It has a little bit of water resistance, nothing to write home about probably. Um, oh dear, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna lose track of all my colors there. <laughs> oh well, they're everywhere, I guess. I just wanted to keep track of my seven base colors. Okay, so we will start. I found that a 50 mil was $24 at Goulet Pens. And oh, and then it was there was a sale or something at Gold Spot, so that was like uh, $19.20 at Gold Spot. There are probably a lot of other places, but that was my quick looking. I called it a complex color. I want to call it blue, but I see that violet interior. It's very pretty. It's kind of a purpley interior. 
and then let me hold up the splatter yeah that's really pretty um, I just really liked it I thought that for artwork you couldn't beat this ink it's just really really nice let's do some comparisons because you will be surprised at what I found out I think okay so here's our ink right here our blue ink and then look at how troublemaker milky ocean looks just like it and then uh, I actually felt like Franklin Kristoff blue 72 was a close comparison but without that complexity that comes in these two of the the uh, turquoise and the pink coming out you don't quite get as much of that in this one but then hero carbon blue that that made me stand up and take notice too whoops <laughs> really like to be able to see both the color and the name of the ink uh caveco royal blue although not a match was um was giving us that interior quality that it just was pretty i thought and I, i've always liked that ink anyway and here's another one, <clears throat> J. Urban Ancre Eclat de Sapphire, or, or something like that. Um, very, very similar. Not a badge or anything, but <clears throat> gives us some options. Diamine China Blue is a little ways from it, and it's very uh, simple. It's not as complex. And then, okay, here's the final one, Vinta Inks Violet Mascara. This is so much lighter, but it's got the same kind of complexity going on. You see how the base, the main uh, swatch kind of lines up with the inner part of these two inks. It's got the pink and the brighter blue and the kind of um, the violet mascara going on. So I thought you'd find that pretty interesting. Okay, let's put this aside. I don't want to lose them. And we can go right to the next spread. Whoops, good thing there's only seven because probably going to have you here all day okay the next one shifting totally gears toward our purple ink very nice bright ink it was actually a lot brighter than i thought and it does have gold sheen um which gave it something in common with Lamy dark lilac but it's it's just much brighter it, it's definitely not as dark so let's look at that sheen um it is pretty it's not as impressive as Lamy Dark Lilac, but, um, oh gosh, I should have bookmarked the page because that's in here. Um, but yeah, you see, you get me right out of practice and then I forget about those kinds of things. I'm pretty sure it's in here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Here we go. Okay, so with Lamy Dark Lilac, it's just super impressive. Look at that. I mean it's not hesitant at all it's it's a total sheen fest and then over here on our Ackerman Simplicities um, number 13 yeah you got the sheen but it's not as intense and it's not quite as bold uh, and then your purple is brighter but that's something for you to notice because if you like Ackerman inks and you know that and you know how they behave sometimes they can be a little dry but I felt like this was doing well it was in my Lamy Safari with a broad nib I should have reminded myself to make sure I, I mentioned that. We were Lamy Safari Broad Nib, uh, yeah, right across. So, sorry about that. That's real distracting. Okay, let's look at some purple comparisons. This could take a while. <laughs> you know how I am with purple. I have quite a few, but we'll see what we can do here. Okay, so Cross Violet. <clears throat> Gee whiz, that's going to be next on my comparison. I'd like to really play around with that one. And then Lamy dark lilac so you notice the difference though right there's an, a richness and a difference there's a lot more gold sheen um and yet we're in the ballpark with these three just like i would heard that's that was the rumor was these three were kind of contenders let's get out um dye mine imperial purple uh is not to be underestimated it's a gorgeous purple ink and it's very um economical I think I can say that with confidence. Um, and it does have gold sheen, just not as heavy as the Lamy Dark Lilac. But no, no one matches that for the sheen, I don't think, so far. And then Diatramentus Purple Violet that a viewer mentioned, and it's gorgeous. It is really pretty. It's a contender here. And then Pure Pens of Scotland. It's a little different. It's not quite as an intense, but it's gorgeous. And it is dark. Coming out of a nib... Um, yeah that'd be really pretty same with diamine monbato's hat it's dark 
and it's gorgeous oh darn okay i'm gonna have to kind of lay it down here in the middle i just really want you to be able to see it where it falls and then J. Arbonne Amethyst D. Laurel. This is nowhere near exhaustive. These are just some purples because I've got a lot more. But Oh, yes, and someone had mentioned um, Birmingham Andy Warhol Pop Art Purple. That's where that falls. It's nice and bright. It's a flowy ink. It doesn't have as much gold sheen. Uh, it's got, I think, a little bit, but it just isn't really to write home about compared to these others. Okay, then, um, well, Noodler's Bay State Concord Grape is <laughs> very permanent, probably stains everything. And uh, that's how it compares. And keeping in mind that this is just a really quick comparison, just for fun, really. And that's what I like to do. Okay, so what do we have left here? Ooh, we have this beautiful shimmer ink next. The Van Diemen's. These inks are made in Australia, and I don't know much about the brand yet, except that I purchased, I think, five samples from Van S. I love their four mil samples, and this is a gorgeous shimmer ink with a lot of complexity. Take a look at all that shimmery goodness. And that's shimmering off the natural light to my left at my window. It's really pretty, and look at the complex um, chromatography. This was enough to heal my back. <laughs> You're playing with this ink. Oh, so much fun. Uh, let me get the main. Uh, when we look at the main tile here, we can see just a faint amount of water resistance. Same here. It's there, but it's not going to stay on an envelope or anything without tape or wax or something. But I really like it. I think it's pretty. And I used this in my Serendipity hybrid pen where you dip it it's got a fountain pen nib and ink, uh, nib and feed, but it's a dip pen. Most of you have seen that who followed me. Um, I just did that because I was lazy and I didn't, I really didn't want to clean out my other pens because I had beautiful ink in them. So I decided to get the serendipity on the job there. So this is really pretty and it's got my attention. The brand has my attention. Um, I can't wait to explore the others. Now, this was one that I did not find comparisons for, I don't think. No, I really, hmm, I found a few, but I'm not all that. Let's get it, let's try it anyway, but you guys will have to bear with me here. Here's our ink. And then I wasn't really finding much that went with it, but it was reminiscent of Kyoto Tag, um, Koyonodo, Koyonodo, oh boy, I forget all the pronunciations after a while. You know, um, that's a long way apart though. I really couldn't, I actually feel like this other one was closer, but it's, it's a ballpark away. Yeah, so this just shows you, this was sort of like my way of illustrating that, that I couldn't find anything that really looked like it. But the uh, Vinta Inks Deep Water Blue made me think of it. And even this one, sort of. So you could, you know, I just feel like this is very unique. Now, I could be wrong. There could be something out there that's a dead ringer for it. But I haven't seen it, <laughs> if there is. And I just really enjoy it for art, for splattering. And I loved how it looked in a nib, too, because it's not quite gray and it's not quite blue. It's just a nice, um, definitely made me think of Vermont in the winter when you go out to your, your frozen windshield and when you look at the crunchy snow and it looks kind of blue. So that was nice to have that little uh, reminder of home. Okay. Um, okay, we got two more. Oh my goodness, what am I up to? Only 18 minutes? Okay, I haven't. Haven't talked your ear off yet. Okay, the second Van Diemen's ink that is a shimmering is up next, and it's the Diamonds Are a Girl's BFF. It's this bright kind of, I want to call it pink, but I'm pretty sure I'm probably wrong, but it's got a silver shimmer, and it's just delicious. It's got that base color is gorgeous, almost magenta, but it's just really, really pretty. So let's take a look here. Um... Again, I ordered this from Venice, a four mil sample, and I absolutely love it. Let me show you the, the shimmer splatter. <laughs> oh my, it was really pretty. Made in Australia, and this is their website, vendemonsinc.com.au. They have several series. They have um, Colors of Tasmania, Hollywood, Wilderness, and Tassie series. 
So this was also in my serendipity. I cleaned that out and dipped it in to try this ink. It has the silver shimmer, uh, kind of a light shading, but pretty. Uh, not really any water resistance and uh, some kind of dark plum sheen around the edges of this. I, I just think it's really pretty. But I think this ink, same as its other, um, same as Winter Morning Frost, looks nice in the nib. It's not just the artwork or the splatter effect that I liked. It was in a nib I liked it too. So, um, okay, I had a few comparisons. <laughs> when do I not? Okay. And, and it's wild. It's all over the place. Here's a Kobe Sumariku Rose. It was Kobe number 41. But that's mainly for almost reaching the base color, but not quite, I guess. And then Black Swan and Australian Roses, Noodlers. I love that color. It's not going to look exactly the same coming out of a nib, but it's close. It's very reminiscent. And then here's Califolio Andronopal. Uh, you know, I felt like it was similar, but it's it, nothing quite the same, I guess. And here is Robert Oster Hot Pink. We're in the ballpark, I think. Oh, here's one that I thought was really Ferris Wheel Press Double Raspberry. That's neat how that base color, like if you had some of this, you could go ahead and you could add some of this to it. Pearl X, and you might come close. You might. I don't know. <laughs> I gotta try that one day. Um, I think, I think this is one that's coming to me from a very generous pen friend. Um, okay, next up is Pilot of Oshizuku Yamabuto, which this just shows you how it compares. We'll go ahead and lay it right over there so we can still kind of see the others. And then, well, Roar and Klinger Solferino, we are, we are way in magenta there, away from pink more and toward magenta and purple. Not sure I'm using the right descriptors, but that, that was just a control, kind of a how far away it was. Really fun ink. I, oh my gosh, I wish I'd ordered a bottle. Because going back now, of course, they're all, you know, selling out. And But maybe um, direct from them or maybe in the future and I don't need a bottle anyway. But I just keep telling myself that. <laughs> okay, so the last one that I have to show you today is the Hippo Noto and Kiwi Ink collaboration with the blue sh uh, shimmer, the green sheen, and the magenta underlay uh, base color. Oh, it's pretty. Thank you, thank you, pen friend MD, for sending me the sample. Um, I just was just blown away. Um, okay, it's very dark in the nib. It does, it, you know, what you're seeing is, is true. It, it, in this broad nib, it's very, very dark because of all, all of what it has going on. And you could see what happened here too, how dark it got, especially when we lay it flat. You know, it's got so much going on, but take a look at the splatter. If you saw it on Instagram, you, if you follow me there, you've already seen this, but I could look at this all day. I could make little cards and glue them and send them out to people with this. It's so pretty. Ink lovers would not mind something like that. And then there's the chromatography and the water test. The magenta really comes out, that underlay. Now, really, the color that it comes out of the nib probably looks more like a hippo. And that's what Hipponoto is about, that plummy purple dark color that, that the animal that you'd see in the zoo, hippo, or in the wild if you were in the right country, um, you know, that's what it looks like. So it's nice and dark and to the eye, I can still see that green uh, sheen, but it's really hard for me to show on my camera. But the writing, it picks it up. Your eye can pick it up. And of course, you can pick it up here, too. Um, this is just really gorgeous. I think, they, I think they were really overrun, and I can see why they sold so many and are backed up a little bit now. Or you know, I'm not exactly sure. You will need to check Hipponoto's website on product availability because I couldn't really determine and I don't have any business buying ink anyway and I can enjoy this gorgeous sample. Um, so that, that is, um, you know, six pages in my ink journal and it shows that, you know, I still got my spirit no matter what's going on, <laughs> you know, whether my back is hurt and my mom is sick or whatever, this, this keeps me sane and happy and 
exploring ink samples is something I love. So I do have one piece of really exciting news to talk about before I go. And that is that I got an email from Ferris Wheel Press. Um, and I have, I have done a lot of reviewing on their, uh, or at least showing you what the colors look like. And they're sending me uh, a little PR package, which I just can't believe it. I'm just blown away. It hasn't arrived yet, but they wanted to include me, they said, and that's wonderful. So we'll be able to look at their new inks uh, soon. And I'm not sure exactly what they're sending. Um, it could be little samples. It could be bottle. I'm not really sure, but it looked like a notebook and some ink samples. There would be the fall and winter collection of ink and a notebook for us to look at and I will definitely share all I can with you because I love to do that and I, if I remember right there was a brown ink involved and I'm I've been kind of excited about brown ink lately so I can't wait and I'm really grateful to them for including me um, I, I'm not sponsored by them or any such a thing I there was a program but it wasn't something I could really do because of how I compare inks um, I felt that it wouldn't work because, um, you know, I'm, I'm all about comparing all the different brands. I'm just ruthless with that. So, uh, you know, that it's not a sponsorship at all. It's just uh, they've been really nice uh, and they, I guess, appreciate my videos. So, um, okay, that's it. And I've gone on a long time. So I hope you're doing well and I hope to be able to give you a, uh, another update soon, but uh, mom's getting the care she needs and everything and and we're doing all we can and um, I'm trying to stay positive and I think it's working so um, Take care and let me know what you thought of these inks. I don't think I can pick a favorite out of these seven. Oh My gosh, I love this. I have a bottle of it. This is gorgeous and so much fun this is really pretty and and uh, complex and then the Ackerman number 13, I have so many purples, but yet I still found this really gorgeous. And uh, yeah, I love their bottles, but. And then this, the, if anything, I think maybe this might be my favorite out of these seven, just because, because of what it does and how it both pleases me in the nib and in the artistic uh, possibilities. And then, um, and I love this. Uh, I have inks that really closely match the base color though that I could add shimmer to so I'm not as tempted and then the Hippo Noto I just loved it for how it or the uh, V1 Kiwi ink I love how it uh, behaves for art and for um, beautiful ink splatters I don't know if I was forced to choose uh, which one I wanted a bottle of it would definitely be Winter Morning Frost such fun and I love the name and it does remind me of Vermont so okay I promised I was gonna leave and and I'll say goodbye now and I will see you in the comments and I'm trying to catch up on those little by little so take care and thank you for watching bye